So this is point three. Be careful of the books you read and the lessons you listen to. Be careful of the books you read and the lesson you lessons you listen to. Books that let me tell you, be careful. One of the books you need to be careful of. Pigs in the parlor. Pigs in the parlor. I read Pigs in the Parlor. At the time that I read Pigs, first of all, let me tell you something. The people who write those books have an anointing on them to write those books. But to read those books, you have to have a special anointing on you to read those books. And I know that you're going through. So you try to pick up you know, certain kinds of books to help you get out of what you're getting out of. But don't pick up books on deliverance. Because if you're going through something really heavy, you don't have an anointing on you to read that book. So let's talk about pigs in a parlor. I read pigs in a parlor. At this stage in my life, I'm I'm mature in the word. Like I am, I have not arrived because there are some things with the word that I drink milk. But there are a lot of things with the word where I'm on meat. This subject is the meat subject for me. Um when I read Pigs in a parlor, I was not mature at all. And I was struggling. I was struggling a lot with fornication. I was struggling and I read pigs in a parlor. I was I read pigs in a parlor and I lost my mind. Like I thought I was going crazy. When you read books about demonic oppression being, you know, delivered or set free from demons, it's like walking up to a bee's nest and just hitting it. That's what it's like. You like you literally walking up to a bee's nest and you hitting it. That's what you're doing. So you have to have a certain anointing on you. And I had to go to my leaders because like my life was falling apart so that they could pray for me. And then one of the ladies, so I had the book and she said, look, this book has ruined a lot of people's lives because I wasn't spiritually mature at all. And even I'm spiritually mature now, but that is not a book that I will pick up to read because I don't have an anointing to read that book. But I'm going to give you weapons that you can use for anything and it will help you through anything. So there was a lady um, who read the book and her stuff, stuff in her house just started breaking down. Until she got rid of the book. When she got rid of the book, it stopped. And I'm, I'm not trying to make you afraid. I'm not trying to make you afraid. And I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to be cautious. I want you to be mindful. And I want you to be careful. That's what I want you to be. Because you have to be careful of the doors that you open. Because when you read certain books, you are opening certain doors. I have a book. Um, I have books on because I'm a prophet, so I have a lot of books on prophecy. If I read a book on prophecy, like every night, like I'm literally having a dream about something, literally every night. Because when you open a book, it's like you are unleashing things in a book. That's just like people for business, business minded people. When when you open a book, you read reading that book, you're unleashing something out of that book. So I know another lady who read Pigs in a Parlor. The lady who read Pigs in a Parlor, at one point in time, she was caught up into lesbianism. But she ended up leaving her hometown of Carolina. Um, South Carolina, I think she was in North Carolina, one of them. So she ended up leaving her hometown. And I followed her. I followed her for a long time. And she was a powerful woman of God. She left her hometown. She got out of um, lesbianism. She got out of it. And she started getting, um, she was, she was real, real powerful in the word, but something changed in her life. And she started to read books like pigs in a parlor, books like prayers that route demons. And she couldn't read those because first of all, she had too much pride in her life to even open those books to read it. So see, that's why you have to be careful because there are things in your life that you open certain books. It'll, it'll cause catastrophes in your life. And when I tell you this lady was powerful, God really used her in a real mighty way. And so she was reading those, book, those books and all of a sudden, hey, welcome to those who are just joining. We're talking about four reasons why the enemy is defeating you. Welcome. I am Prophetess Talisha. I'm not coming to you today as Talisha Isola, the, women's relation, the, the single woman's relationship speaker and coach. I'm coming to you as Prophetess Talisha. So... 
she the lady um i was speaking about so she would was reading pigs in a parlor she read prayers that wrote demons so a lot of books she was reading was about casting out demons and was about expelling demons and because of the pride in her life those demons got a hold of her and the next thing i heard she said i'm moving back to my hometown and i'm thinking to myself i said that is a bad idea I said, that is a bad idea. I didn't tell it to her because I just followed her through social media. So I didn't tell it to her um, directly. But I was like, that is a bad idea. I said, she is going to move back home and it's going to lead to her destruction. Lo and behold, she moved back home. That once powerful woman of God moved back home to her hometown, got back with the person she was in a relationship with was who, who was a woman. And now she's married to a woman. Now she's married to a woman. You got to be careful. And I had said that. I said I had kept and I prayed for her because I'm like, Lord, please help her. I said, because moving back home is going to destroy her. And I didn't even know what was going on at that time. But when I said that and I said with her moving back home, it would destroy her. When I ended up coming across her again, because I stopped following her. But when I came across her again, she was married to a woman doing a conference teaching women about wholeness like that's totally out of order teaching about wholeness and she's married to a woman so in order to embrace wholeness and experience wholeness you have to know that first of all healing and wholeness comes through jesus and he's not embracing a lifestyle of lesbianism he is not embracing uh, embracing a lifestyle of homosexuality that goes against that goes completely against his entire design for what he created so he is not on your side he is not on your team he's not on your team i'm sorry he's not on your team now a lot of people like to say well he still love me that's besides the point whether or not he love you duh he's <laughs> that's why he died he died because he loves us that's his character. His character is love. So just it's not a matter of whether or not he love you. The question is, do you love him? Because he says, if you love him, then you will keep his commandments. So it's not a matter of whether or not you love him. The, I mean, he loves you. The question is whether you love him. So anyway, so that's what happened to the lady. She's not married to a woman. And I be praying for her. her. And I'm like, Lord, please help her. Help her. Like, I'm, I'm praying for her because I know this was a powerful woman of God and I don't want her, I don't want nobody destroyed. And it's like, I don't want her destroyed. So I'm like, Lord, you got to help her. But she made a covenant with that woman. She made a demonic covenant. That's a demonic covenant. When a man and a woman get married, that's a covenant unto God. When a woman and a woman or a man and a man get married, that is a demonic covenant because it goes against the whole identity of God so moving along so <laughs> moving along so let me give you the four reasons why the enemy is defeating you this is the four reasons why the enemy is defeating you and welcome to those who are just joining in that's what we're covering the four reasons why the enemy is defeating you and I'm not coming to you in the capacity as Talisha Isola, the single woman's relationship speaker and coach. I'm coming to you as prophetess Talisha because first and foremost, I'm a, I am a prophetess. I am an ambassador of Christ. I am an advocate for the kingdom of God. So, number one, the enemy is defeating you because you don't use the right weapons. I covered that in point two. Watch the replay. You don't use the right weapons. If I have a headache, I'm not going to bind a headache. If I have a headache, I'm going to use the stripes. So in order for you to know which weapons to use, you have to become more engaged with your Heavenly Father's Word. You have to become more engaged with Him because He is His Word. Read John, John 1. He is His Word. So, number two. You are not consistent in spiritual things. Learn to become a student of the word. Don't just read your Bible. Like some people just read your Bible in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and the earth was void. You know, people just read straight through. No, take your time and read it. And say, okay, well, God, what is it that I need to get out of here? 
what is it? If something pop up to you, pop out to you, God, what are you saying in this in this passage? Don't just read it. Take time and study it. So become a student of the word. Learn to study your word. If you don't and if you don't know how to study your word, you should be in church. You should be in somebody's church, at somebody's Sunday service, somebody's Bible study. And those scriptures that they give you, take those scriptures home and go over those scriptures. That's how you start becoming a student of the word and ask God to disciple you. So, number two, the second one um, with not being consistent in spiritual things, you're not consistent in your relationship with Jesus. You don't pray every day. You don't pray throughout your day. We're supposed to pray without stopping. Pray every day. And you don't have to get on your knees and say the whole a whole prayer. <laughs> you don't have to do all that. Throughout my day, when I'm operating in activities in my business, I'm like, Holy Spirit, please help me. Because you know I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell you. That's my words for everything. That's my words for everything. Because people be like, Talisha, you're so smart. I'm like, no, I got the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I got the Holy Spirit. He's it, it is the word of God say he teaches us all things. So hey, he teaches us all things. I got into the, the foreign exchange market. I hate math. Don't don't give me no numbers. I could count money. <laughs> I could count money. But don't give me no numbers. Like don't don't make me have to look at little shapes and stuff like look, don't do me that. But I wanted to learn a foreign exchange market. And I didn't understand none of the concepts. And you know, I will pray and pray and ask God to help me. And I begin to literally understand it. Because he, I would watch certain teachings and I wouldn't understand it. But I asked him to help me to understand. And he helped me to understand. So whatever it is that you're doing, include him in those activities. Like you are in a relationship. Just like you're in a relationship with a natural person, with a human being, you're in a relationship. You, 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 if this, if you're a guy on here watching this, you know, you have a lady. If you're a lady on here watching this, you have a man. Just like you are in a relationship with them and you are engaging with them. And even with your parents or whomever, like you're engaging, you are in a relationship with the Lord. Engage with Him. Invite him. When I'm doing things, I'm like, Lord, I need your help. I'm like, well, what you like? You like this one or you like that one? Be like, I don't like this one. And this one, I don't like this one. I'll tell him. Like, I'm I'm literally, like, I'm talking to you. I have a conversation with him. Build that relationship. And it was not always like that. I had to grow to this point. I had to grow to this level. I had to grow to this level. So, when you're in a relationship with somebody... And that person keep doing things to hurt you. You are cautious. You should be. You are cautious about how much of yourself that you give to that person. Because you can't. You can see that you can't trust them. There are times where God is cautious with how much he give you. Because you've proven a lot of times that he can't trust you. We all have. But he still gives you time and chance after chance after chance after chance to, to grow in a relationship. Engage with him. You going to work. You at work. Ask him to help you. And just be in a conversation. Be like, Lord, look what I did. Ain't this cute? Like, yeah, talk to him. He listening. So, engage. So, pray. And that's pray. Prayer is communication. Now, there are times where I may go a little deeper in prayer. Yes, there, yes, there, are, there are. But if I'm on a job... I can't be going into tongues on the people's job. <laughs> I can't be going into tongues on the people's job unless I'm doing it silently. You know, I can't be walking, praying all out through the facility. Learn how to just have a relationship. So, <laughs> number three as to the four, four reasons why the enemy is defeating you. Your lifestyle. Your lifestyle. So, <laughs> all right <laughs> i had a thought your lifestyle prevents you from walking in spiritual authority your lifestyle can stop you from walking in spiritual authority so they have the seven sons of skiva i want y'all to read this this is I, I want y'all to go back and go through all of this and the reason why i provided so much scripture scripture is because when the man said what he said 
and he was talking about God and trying to talk about principles of God. And I asked him for scripture. He said he didn't have no reference. I knew the scriptures that he was referring to. He just was using them incorrectly. So that's why I was able to go back and provide the scriptures because I knew what, what he meant, but it was taken out of context. So Acts 19, 13 through 16. So they had the Jews, uh, the, 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 the then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them. The call over them, which had evil spirit, the name of the Lord Jesus. So let me paraphrase this. There was a, a man that was possessed with demons. And they had these people trying to cast these demons out. The way that Paul, who had the lifestyle. <laughs> the lifestyle. So Paul, they, they was trying to cast the demons out how they saw Paul did. And that man who was filled with them demons looked at him and said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? Because they're trying to exercise spiritual spiritual authority, but they don't have the right to exercise because they don't have that lifestyle. So guess what? The spirits got out of the man and jumped into them. So read it for yourself. So you have to make sure that you have, you need to, everything that I'm telling you and I'm going to teach you, you have to have spiritual authority to do. You have to have spiritual authority to do. And if you don't have spiritual authority, I'm going to teach you how to at least get yourself on a path to having spiritual authority. So 1 Peter 1, 13 through 21 gives a call to be holy. It gives a call to be holy. And the word of God says to live a lifestyle of holiness. God says to live holy because he is holy. That's what he tells us. And so you may say, okay, well, you know, we fall short. Yeah, let me tell you, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. If you're human, you're going to fall. You're human, you're going to fall. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. If you're human, you're human. I know you're human. But you're going to fall. You, you Listen, it's going to happen. The problem is, you can't stay there. A lot of people fall and stay there. As long as you're in this flesh, things are going to happen. But you can't stay there. You have to get yourself up. And you have to move forward. So I know we are not perfect. I know we are not perfect. I know that. I know that there are going to be times where you, whatchamacallit, but you have to repent. You have to repent. And you can't just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm, you, you have to turn. You like you have to turn. <laughs> you have to get out of that situation. You have to go and leave that situation. That's Acts 3 and 19. And so number four, number four. Of the four reasons why the enemy is defeating you, it is because you made yourself an enemy of God. James 4 and 4. Friendship with the world makes you an adversary to God. Whoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And for some of y'all, I need y'all to brace yourselves because y'all feelings is about to get real hurt right about now. And let me tell you, whatever which, because I understand spiritual warfare, I understand the realm of the spirit, because let me tell you the issue that you're having. You think you're flesh, but we are not flesh. We are spirit because God is a spirit and we're made in his image. And the only way that we can occupy this earth is if we have a earth suit, which is our body. Just like if you go to space, you need a space suit to occupy outer space. So you are a spirit. I am a spirit. We just have a body. But if you can get the concept and try to hold on to the concept that you are a spirit, then guess what? It helps you a lot to not to lean so much towards the flesh. So let me give you this. This about to hurt some of y'all feeling so bad. And whatever witch or warlock that come across this or try to send anything my way that is not of God to myself or to my family, you will fall in your own trap to your own demise, to your own destruction. So this is warning. I know who I am in Christ. I know my authority in Christ. And I have spiritual authority. And there is no other God greater than my God. 
My God is greater. And I am covered by him. His glory overshadows it, overtakes me. So be careful as to what you do. I, I, I understand spiritual authority. So a lot of you may not understand what I just did. But there are people who understand what I just did. So the reason why I did that is because I'm about to tell you what's, what's about to hurt your feelings. So when I talk about being an enemy to God. You can't call yourself a Christian and be a fan of Beyonce. See, some of y'all just got mad and then turned me off, but that's okay. I'm not here to be your friend. I got friends. I'm here to help you. You can't call yourself a Christian and be a fan of Beyonce. You can't be a friend of God and be a friend of the world. <clears throat> you can't do it. You cannot do it. There is nothing about Beyonce's lifestyle that said Jesus Christ. There is nothing about the... And if you pay attention to the lyrics of, of a lot of Beyonce's songs, you will see that Beyonce is totally against Jesus you will see that what she sing is to she like she she puts it out there like she totally disrespects God like totally. She even have lyrics, lyrics that disrespect God, but you call yourself a Christian and want to be a fan of Beyonce. You got to pick a side. You got you got to pick a side. Pick a side. Pick a side. Pick a, pick a side. Pick a side. So you can't call yourself a Christian because Beyonce is the enemy to God. Beyonce already said, Beyonce has already declared the gods that she served. And you all, you got to be also be careful about people who say Jesus because everybody who say Jesus is not for him. They're not. It even says in Revelations, I believe it says, um, I believe that is in Revelations that um, they were saying to me, Lord, Lord, but he's going to say, depart from me. Heaven, I cast out demons in your name, but he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So you've been doing all this all the time, all this long time in the name of the Lord. But he said he never knew you. So you have to look at the fruit. I don't care. Even if they say Jesus, I don't care who it is. You look at the fruit. I don't care how much a honeydew melon try to say is a cantaloupe. I don't care. It could be sitting along the cantaloupes. But when you go, first of all, when you look at it, it don't even have the appearance. And even if it did have the appearance, when you go and you slice that honeydew melon and you slice the cantaloupe, the color inside of it is totally different. When you go and you bite a cantaloupe and you bite a honeydew melon, the flavor and the taste is totally different. She does not have no fruit. Of, of who you say your father is. You say that God is your father. You say that you're a Christian. This girl ain't got no fruit of, of him. None. I know I'm yelling. I digress. So moving on. In Isaiah 29 and 13. It says you may honor him. You may honor him with your lips. But your heart is far from him. For those of you who are mad, because I talk, I don't care. But for those of you who are mad, because I talked about Beyonce. <laughs> for those of you who are mad, if you are mad, do a hard check. I'm a woman of God. You can check my fruit. I have a track record. You can check my friends. Do a hard check. Do a hard check. So welcome to those who are just coming in. We're talking about four reasons why the enemy is defeating you. And we are on number four. So you may say you serve him. And there's a lot of people because even a lady who's now married to a woman, she helps people to become whole. You not whole yourself. And guess what? She uses scripture because she knows the word. The devil knows the word. The devil knows the word. Like the devil knows the word. The devil been here a long time. He know the word. So the devil knows the word. He knows the word. He does. So he been here a long time. So you get excited because somebody can quote a scripture, but you need to watch the fruit. Because let me tell you, somebody can, gifts come without repentance. 
So they may have a gift of something. They can, they, you can operate in a gift, but you cannot fake fruit. You can't fake fruit. You can't. You can't. All right, I'm moving on. First John two fifteen. Two, first John chapter two verses fifteen through sixteen. It says, "Don't love the world." So I know the world looks good, but it will destroy you. It will destroy you. If you love the, it says, and this is first John two, 15 through 16. It said, if you love the world, God's love isn't in you. So you have to pick a side. What team will you play for? Are you team Jesus or are you, are you for the world? Pick a side. So Revelation three, 15 through 16, it says that you can't be lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, God is going to spit you out of his mouth. I don't want I I don't want, want to be spit out God's mouth. I want him to say Talisha, 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 Talisha. I want to always be on his lips. I want my name always on on his lips. And so let me give you weapons, and then I'm gonna do a demonstration, and that's it. So weapons, the blood of Jesus. We learn that it atones for our soul, so it speaks on on our behalf. That's a weapon. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. It is above every name. It is above every name. There is no name higher. There is no authority higher than that name. None. So that name, every knee, every knee in heaven, on earth, under the earth has to bow to that name and is subject to that name. So the other one, the weapons. The name, the blood. So, <laughs> so the blood, the blood of Jesus. I got the blood, the name. I think that was it. Yeah, that that's that's the that's the that's the weapons I have for you today. Now, let me tell you, the blood in the name. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, it will clean you up. It will clean up your life, and it will set you on the right track. It will set you on the right track. A lot of you are Christians, but you have a, you are very carnal because you spend more time watching TV, engaging in activities that are that don't have anything to do with your heavenly Father. One of the things would, would help to change my life. Remember, y'all remember WWJD? What would Jesus do? So when they had the WWJD craze, I used to ask myself, and I used to look at the things I'm doing. I'm like, I know the Lord would not be pleased with this. That's what I was saying. That's that's what helped to, to clean up my life. Because we are living now. But there's a day where we're going to die. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a prophetess. I give you what it is. I, I give you the truth. I don't sh make it pretty. It just it is what it is. One day, we are going to leave this earth. We are. And I want to... I don't, I don't want to be one of the ones who say, I, I knew you. I'm like, and I've been testifying for you all this time. Telling people about you all this time. I don't want to be before him crying and he say that. So when I do certain things or when I'm considering doing certain things, I have to consider the fact that I don't know when my, when my time is going to be. I would like to think that I'm going to live to see next year. The year after next, the year after that, the year after that, the year after that. I would like to think that I'm going to live to see my children. I don't have any kids yet. But I would like to think that I'm going to live to see my children's children. My children's children's children. I would like to think that I'm not going to die. I just want to be raptured up. <laughs> but that's just me. That don't mean that's what it's going to be. I buried one of my sisters. Um, we buried her uh, this year. And guess what? We were, we were in the same age bracket. A few years ago, we buried another one of my and not sisters in Christ. We buried another one of my sisters in Christ. Her and I in the same age bracket. And I know these are women who live for the Lord. But I guess their assignment on earth was fulfilled. So it's like, I, because I, I don't know. And this is just me personally. I don't know. So therefore, I try to live my life in a manner that says, okay, let me make sure that I'm living a life to please God because I know I want to be with him in eternity. So when you apply the blood and you apply the name, it'll clean up your life and it'll start to give you clarity. When you want to deal with iniquity, 
to deal with iniquity because you have to deal with iniquity. It's Isaiah 53 and 5. It says he was bruised for our iniquity. That's what it says. So you can use the blood and you can use the name. But you have to deal with it. So I'm about to do this for you. And this is what I do. This is what I do. When I wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning, sometimes this is what I do. Throughout the day, this is what I do. At night, this is what I do. <coughs> so I say... <coughs> Excuse me. So I say, um, I'll close my eyes because I just go into meditation mode. You don't have to close your eyes. I close my eyes. And I'll just say, I apply the blood of Jesus to my soul. I apply the blood of Jesus to my soul. I apply the blood of Jesus to my soul. Lord, let your blood go through my mind. Let your blood get deep down into the corridors of my heart. Go through every path, every walkway, every, every hallway, every area of my heart. Any closed doors or closed gates, Lord, with the power, O oh God, of your resurrection. Father God, open them and let your blood go in. Let your blood go in strong, Lord, and wash away everything that is in my heart that is not of you. Cleanse me and purify me. Let your blood, Lord Jesus, get deep down into my emotions and into my will. Let it get down into my will, Lord, into my emotions. I apply the blood of Jesus to my spirit. Cleanse me. I apply the blood. And that's what I do. And that's how I do. And I just continue. And if a scripture comes to me, sometimes I have like a list of scriptures. And I read the scriptures. <clears throat> I read the scriptures to help. So, um, it says Isaiah 53 and 5 for iniquity. I, I'll say... I apply the bruises of Jesus Christ to my soul because he was bruised for our iniquity. So I'll say I apply the bruises of Jesus to my soul. I apply the bruises of Jesus to my soul. I apply every bruise that Jesus took for me. I apply it to my soul. And that's what I do. Now, when it comes to the name of Jesus, I use the name of Jesus as well. And guess what? Even with the blood, I send the blood of Jesus through my bloodline, through every generation, those that came before me and those that will come after me. I repent on behalf of those that came before me because there are some of their iniquity that has fallen in my generation. So I send the bloodline through my family tree, through my bloodline, because I have loved ones that don't have the wisdom of God that I do. I don't. So I know that they're going, they have, like I have a niece. I have a brother who lifestyle is totally against God. And I have a niece. And I'm, I'm responsible for my family. I'm responsible in a sense that the spiritual things that I know to do, I'm going to do to help to save their life. Now they have to get up and put one foot in front of the other. But I'm going to make sure that I do my part. So when they leave this earth, I'm not laying all, all on the casket crying because I did my part. They didn't choose God. So I do go through every generation of my um my my family. All, and I, I send the blood all the way back to Adam. We going all the way back. We dealing with all of them. So that's what I do. Now, let me tell you. So when you do this, because this is what you need to know, because people will teach you spiritual warfare, but they don't tell you what to look for afterwards and what's going to happen. But I, I want you to be well equipped. So, and there are just some times where I just apply scriptures. I apply and I just quote the scriptures. And one of the scriptures that I've been holding on to is like, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, which means reverence, worship, and depart from evil. That's a scripture. 
that I've been meditating on and I've just re and I just repeat the scripture and let me tell you you have to grow to this level you have to grow to this level because I wasn't at this level you have to grow to this level so because I understand spiritual warfare because my spiritual leaders Apostle Ronnie or Stewart and Pastor Joyce B. Stewart of Jesus Christ Apostolic Lighthouse Kingdom Ministries International taught us spiritual warfare they taught us and they, they teach us spiritual warfare. They never stopped te ta teaching us spiritual warfare. So I learned spiritual warfare because I had leaders who taught spiritual warfare because this is an everyday battle. So there are times where I would literally spend, like I have been, there's an area that I'm struggling in. There's an area that I am struggling in <clears throat> that I need to build up my faith in God in this area to help me through it. So I will literally sit for like hours at a time and just meditate because I need to build up my confidence and my courage. And this is a level you have to grow, grow, grow to because when at first when I used to do it, I was like, are we finished yet? That's how I used to feel because my flesh didn't want to do that. But let me tell you. So when you do this, um, when you do these, this, there are things that you need to know. There are... Things going, when you start to do that, there are things going to rise, that's going to rise to the surface. There's things that's in you, feelings, thoughts, emotions, that's going to rise to the top, that's going to come to your mind. And when it comes to your mind, repent and ask God to help you in that area. And if it's the same thing and it keeps coming up and keeps coming up and keeps coming up, then that's something that God is saying, hey, you need to deal with this. He's saying, hey, you need to deal with this. That's what he's saying. You need to deal with it. And so you need to write it down and pray about it and ask him to help you to deal with it. And you need to sincerely pray about it. And if you could get some scriptures, because you can. Get, <clears throat> there's not anything in the world, anything that you deal with that you can't get scriptures for. You get scriptures and you put word to it. So um, make sure you repent and you deal with it. Because it's the things that keep coming because it's a hindrance to your soul. Now, also, when you do this, I need you to know that you're cutting off access to the enemy. And he's not going to like that. Because you know what he said? Let me tell you what he said. He said that he's been in your in your bloodline. In your in your bloodline. He's been from one generation to the next generation in your family, whatever the situation is, whatever that spirit is, but I've been dealing with bitterness. So I don't know if somebody's dealing with bitterness, but I know I've been mentioning bitterness a lot. So if it's bitterness or whatever it is that you're dealing with, he's saying, Hey, I've been here for a long time. Your mama was bitter. Your daddy was bitter. Your grandmama was bitter. Your great grandmother was bitter. I've been here forever. And so now you think, that you going to try to come along and try to stop my progress and try to keep me from growing in your bloodline. So you think you're going to just come in and try to change things. I have a right to be here. I have a right to be here. I have a right to be here. And that's how he feels. But guess what? When you are a child of God covered with the blood of God, he has no rights to you because his blood cancels contracts. It cancels covenants. Not just the ones that you made, but it breaks the ones that come before you. Because when you come on the scene, when you come on the scene, the whole trajectory of your life and the, the generations to come change because you are on the scene. But it only change if you if you have the ability to operate in spiritual authority. If you want to operate in spiritual authority and you know you have areas of your life you're struggling in. If you have areas of your life that you are struggling in and you want to operate in spiritual authority every day, you need to be applying the blood of Jesus and you need to be applying the name of Jesus. That when you do this, the enemy is going to get upset and he's going, he's going to get upset and he's going to try to come at you. But that's why you stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. This is an everyday walk. This is work. People won't be a Christian and be relaxed. You can't be no Christian and be relaxed. 
You got to work. Like, you have to work to maintain your peace. You have to work to maintain your lifestyle. You have to work for these things. You have to work. So, the enemy is saying, okay, well, you know, she trying to get me out of bloodline. Let me, let me start, start doing things. And even when he leaves, it does say that the spirit leaves out of a man. And when he can't find no place to go, that he returns. When he try to come back, he should not find that spot empty. There has to be something there. Your relationship with God needs to be active 100% full force. That when he try to enter, he can enter. He can't. So, stay focused. I gave you, I gave you, let me tell you, I gave you a lot of information. This is some good information on how to fight and why the enemy is defeating you. If you have, if this has blessed you, sow a seed into me. My cash app is in the link of my bio. If you have any questions or any comments, um, if you have comments, you can um, comment here or you can D DM me, message me. If you have any questions, you also can message me. But um, that's what I have for you. I am um, Prophetess Talisha. Like I said, I didn't come to you today in the capacity as Talisha Isola, the single woman's relationship speaker and coach. I didn't come to you in that capacity. I came to you in the capacity as Prophetess Talisha to give you what God has said. And I know this was long, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it changes your life. And you, I hope you continue. And definitely be kind and share this with somebody. So you all have a great, awesome, and marvelous day. Bye-bye. And DM me if you have any questions. Have a great day.